well, the CPU, and hopefully we can put one in the GPU. GPU. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Today, we're going to take another look at the Thrift Store HTPC because I got a few things in the mail for it, and um, I am on a quest to reduce the temperatures inside of it. Um, if you're new to the channel or this is the first time you're seeing this system, um, I have a couple of other videos on, on this machine and I'll link them up right up here and you can go check them out. Um, but basically to get everybody up to speed, I found this HP um, Elite Desk or I forget what it's called. Anyways, it's an HP Elite 8300. It had a i3-2120 in it, I believe. It came with 16 gigs of RAM plus another 4 gigs of RAM sort of like stuffed in here for safekeeping or something like that. And it came with this uh, GPU. It was a 80... I've forgotten again. 8950 or something like that or 8450. I'll put that up on the screen. Um, anyways... I've been upgrading it. Uh, we stuffed a 3770, um, I don't think it's a K. I think it's a i7-3770 in there. We reduced the RAM down to eight gigabytes. No need for the 16 gigabytes in this system because I use it as an HTPC and emulator box. And we've stuffed a ridiculous GTX 1650 into it um, because why not? <laughs> So now my sort of quest and goal is to get more air in and more air out somehow and, and hopefully keep it a little cooler. Um, we're hitting temperatures on the GPU above 80 degrees and although it's not horrible for it, this will be in my entertainment center and it's, it's not ideal for airflow. So any couple of degrees we can shave off of this is going to um, probably help it increase its lifespan. Um, hopefully significantly because I had another HTPC before this um, which was similarly specced out but this just fits into my um, entertainment center better and before that for years I had a Q6600 Dell Optiplex I, I forget the numbers but it was it was a similar setup to this thing and I ran that thing uh, forever it was a YouTube box uh, sling box um, well uh, you know I did emulation on there, Nintendo, yeah, it's, these, these form factor PCs are fantastic for this job. So, um, where am I going with this? Anyways, let's, let's start on it. Let's do some stuff. Um, first and foremost, if you'll remember, there's no, um, PCI bracket back here for the, uh, GT 1650 because it came with a full size bracket and we can't use that. So, I had to order one and it finally arrived and we can put it in there, the low profile bracket. So why don't we start with that. So we'll pull this out of here. Um, yeah, there we go. Nope, I go, there it goes. And like I said, it's missing the bracket and that's not ideal. Let's. Uh, Slap this on there and it'll be, you know, more better. Let me find the screws to this thing. All right, there we go. Not a uh, super exciting thing to watch, so I just slapped on, uh, slapped it on there off camera. But uh, now it's going to be nice and secure and no more sort of like, you know, it's not rigged. Uh, to keep it sturdy in there when I didn't have this um, bracket. I just put a small screw right here and then the rest of that screw against one of these dividers on the PCI bracket. That way it couldn't move around too much because I, you know, I didn't want it you know, wobbling or vibrating or anything like that. But this is um, definitely a better idea than just going sans bracket. So we'll slap that back in there. There we go, beautiful. Next, I have a couple of nice fans to go into, well, the CPU, and hopefully we can put one into the PSU. 
So let's get a look at these things. Do a little unboxing here. I want to rip the box. Now I got the, the Redux. Um, just the, the gray, you know, Noctua has sort of like a brown and brown and like a tan or a lesser brown <laughs> color. Anyway, it's the color screen of the Redux. Um, I think it makes them cheaper. I don't, I don't know, because these are a couple of bucks cheaper than the regular Noctua fans, so I'm all for that. So let's go ahead and uh, stick these in there. Um, Actually, no. So let's go ahead. I'm going to button this all back up, boot it up into Windows, and I'll start running you know, some Cinebench and some uh, Heaven Benchmark. And um, we'll have a baseline and we can go, uh, we can test against that. So, be right back. Okay, I've got all my temperature readings over here. Um, I'm going to leave open pretty much all of them to see if their numbers drop when we put, you know, the new fans in there. Um, that includes temperature for, you know, my hard drives, the GPU, CPU, and then the miscellaneous ones, whatever, you know, TZ0001 are on the um, main board, probably north and south bridge or something, who knows. Anyways, um, I'm going to run Cinebench uh, a few times, usually about three, to find our max temperatures. Then I'll let it cool all the way back down. And then I'll run Heaven Benchmark, whoop, right there. And we'll let that run for like 20 minutes and see what our maxes are. So let's get going. All right, just wrapping it up here on the third test. Over here, I see that we hit a max of 77 degrees, 77, 76-ish, you know, the package 77 is the highest it got. It's well within acceptable um, sort of boundaries. If I don't get anything from our new fans, you know, the, the temperature stays the same, I'm not gonna be too uh, upset because it's still a pretty good temperature. Also, before we go anywhere, these temperatures for the uh, main board, TZ0001, they didn't change at all. Our highs and lows, max and everything, you know, current, it's all the same numbers. So I don't think those readings are um, accurate for anything. Okay, we've been cooking for uh, almost 10 minutes and our temperature for the GPU has plateaued at 84 degrees. And we've been sitting at about 1650 megahertz for a while. Uh, when the temperature was lower in the 70s up to like the mid almost almost the high 70s we were sitting at about 1850 megahertz but once we broke through into the 80s uh it immediately dropped down to about 1800 megahertz and then every degree we went up past 80 degrees we dropped a little more and a little more until we settled at 1650 megahertz which as you can see when it was cool we were at 1920 megahertz so we lost roughly 300 megahertz and that i mean it's 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 not a huge drop, but it's not insignificant. So, also I noticed, and I'm going to grab you out of here. The case, and I know you can't see this, but here is cold. Like, it's it's like cold metal feeling. But as soon as you move over to about right here, you know, where the GPU is, th this is like three times hotter than over here. This is warm. In fact, I could probably use this to, to warm my cup of coffee on. Just sit here and <laughs> keep it warm. Um, and the heat comes all the way down to here. And it starts, you know, this is where the fan is. So obviously um, this will be cooler. But right here above the CPU and the GPU over here, it is, it is toasty. So a way to expel the air from here would be nice. Um, those are some vents there, but like tiny fans are, are really loud, so I really don't want to put a tiny fan on there. And the two fans that are on the GPU, those are tiny as well. So if I go into, like one of the commenters had said that I could go into Afterburner and tell it to ramp up the fans. I could go into the BIOS and tell this fan to spin faster. And a faster spinning fan is going to move a lot more air, but it's also going to make a lot more noise. And the fans that are in here already, already make a lot of noise. And seeing as this is supposed to be in my entertainment center as an HTPC, I would like it to be quiet. So 
that's why I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go into the BIOS and speed things up or into afterburner and, and, and speed the fans up because I feel like it's going to be the drawbacks are going to outweigh the benefit and the drawbacks being noise for me. So now that we have our baseline, why don't we go ahead and put those new fans in there? So I did some research and the fan that's in here um, spins up to like I wish I would have wrote it down. Like 4,000 RPM is like the max. And it moves like 45 CFM of air. And this max on this one is like 18 or 1900 RPM. And it moves like 63 CFM of air. So this should be way quieter and move way more air. And hopefully do um, a lot of good for this little system. And, and um, keep the, God, it's so warm right here. Um, anyways, hopefully this is going to lower our temperatures, uh, both the CPU and the GPU. And then we're going to put one in here and hopefully, uh, we'll actually get some air movement through here and help to cool it off. So the CPU fan, um, undoubtedly is going to be the easiest one to change out. So we'll go ahead and do that. And it'll probably make the biggest difference. While I'm in here, uh, let me... somebody did suggest to put a fan on the back of here to draw air out, but unfortunately there's just not enough room here. So to get your front fan assembly out of these things, you got to remove your front bezel. There we go, simple enough. And then you've got all these little tabs on the front to hold uh, your, your fan up. Uh, assembly in and these are kind of a pain to get out because you got to flex the little uh, tabs and, and pull it out and I can feel kind of like you're breaking something and honestly you probably could break something oh see <laughs> I didn't break it but it does it, it doesn't feel um, doesn't feel great So there's a lot more wire on here, um, so we'll just kind of bundle that up and stick it in the side. But make sure that your fan is, of course, pointing the right way. It's going to blow air um, over the CPU cooler. So the back of the fan, at least the sticker side, I call it the back of the fan, um, points at your CPU cooler. You don't want it going this way. There we go. Good and secure. Well, that is an unforeseen. Yep. So this is the, the stock CPU fan um, connector. And you can see the little tabs on there are on both opposite ends. And then our new one has a tab you know, three pins in, so that's going to be in the way. I can shave that off. That's not a big deal. Some of you might say that I could just repin this. Um, come on. <sighs> come on. Um, I could take the pins out and swap this end off for the one um, that came, you know, the stock one in here. But, I mean, I feel like that's more trouble than it's worth. The little guy there is not that important. So we're just going to shave it off so it'll fit uh, in the factory connector. Yeah. There we go. That should do it. Definitely will do it. Okay, so I shaved that um, little locating tab off, little keyway, and now it should fit in there just fine. So now it should fit in there no problem. Yep. 
There we go. So you line up your tabs, a little bit of a push, and it goes right together. And then I'm just going to take this wire and sort of stuff it back into there. I'll tuck my wires back where they belong. Oh, actually, while we're in here, might as well undo the power supply. There we go. Unplug that, unplug that. And then, does it just lift out? Yes, it does. So now we're going to try and... Wow, you didn't see any of that. I apologize. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to try and replace this fan with something quieter. I imagine this fan is the same as the CPU fan, but uh, we'll find out. Okay, here. So we're going to take this thing apart, get down to this fan... And hopefully the wiring that's in there is simple enough that we can adapt it over. I'm not going to cut the wires on my Noctua fan. I'll probably, um, I think I've shown them off in the past. Yeah, I'll just take one of these. Can you focus? There you go, buddy. Um, one of these Molex. To fan adapters just um, clip this off and, and wire it so let's see how this comes apart here I'm sure there's just a handful of screws take that camera okay Oh, there we go. Okay. So before we go too much further into this, um, I do have to stress that opening up a power supply is not recommended by the manufacturer or really um, anyone, unless you know exactly what you're doing. Um, basically, you don't want to poke around in here, um, especially with, you know, metal stuff or your fingers, um, because even though this is unplugged, and seemingly powered down um, your capacitors they can all store power and they can at the very least give you a hell of a shock and um, that is no bueno I always go into these things with a bit of caution actually a lot of caution because I don't want to get hurt and I don't want you to get hurt so don't do anything dumb you have been warned. All right, so the fan's got to come out. Imagine these screws down here do the trick. All right, you look. Can this come out there? There go. Nope, still not convinced. Snagged on the wire. Might have to cut that. I might have to cut that zip tie. What did I do with my dirty wire? Andy dandy nippers. Well, come out of there being so combative. Yeah, so the wire goes down into this bundle here. Um, and I'm going to find out where it goes to. Give me a second. All right, so I figured out what was going on here. This was just snagged on something. Um, it comes up along here and then goes right here. 
So it has a plug um, at the end of it, but it's not, um, it's actually a PWM fan. It's four wires. So I'm going to adapt it to it. I'll probably, oh, I really don't want to cut that uh, Noctua fan. I'll figure something out here, but uh, I'm going to dig this thing out of here because it is um, glued in place so that it doesn't um, come dislodged. So I'm going to pick this glue off here, unplug it, and get this fan out of here, and then I'll figure out what I'm going to do. I don't know. Okay, there's our prize. I got it out. It's got a weird connector on the end, and it was, you know, boogered up with glue. But we won in the end. Well, I think what I am going to do, I want to get away from modifying this fan. I don't know why. <laughs> If it wasn't as an expensive, I mean, this fan was like 15 bucks and, and that's, I mean, it's not a huge amount of money, but, um, it seems kind of crappy to cut it. You don't only make it a one use case scenario thing. Okay. I've been hemming and hawing about what to do about this for God, about 10 minutes now. And I don't know why I am so against cutting this. Um, I'm going to put it in here and I'm probably never, ever going to take it out. Uh, and it was, it's not like this was super expensive. It's not like it's going to break the bank. So what we're going to do is we'll sit here. So just going to measure it out, clip it off, and then we'll wire this connector onto it. Stop messing around. Go ahead and do it. Boom. Did it. It's over. It's not like I can't fix this if it ever comes down to it. I mean, again, no, I'm not, I don't see myself taking it back out of here. So we'll cut this one about halfway. Shazam. That's now a parts fan. Not that I ever use them for anything. I've got a drawer full of parts fans. I only take their wires off. Ready to be grafted onto here. The wires are all the same colors. I checked, they all go to the same place. So. They're probably all of the same functions. So like I said, I'm, I'm not going to solder those together. Just This is going to be good enough. I'll wrap each one individually with a little tape and then wrap the whole bundle together and then slide this sheathing over it and it'll be factory mint. And there's our wire splice. And it's not exactly up to NASA standards, but um, it should be just fine in here. So let us, oh, definitely make sure that um, we're putting this in the right way. Uh, we're going to be exhausting air out the back. So let's make sure we do that. And then there's a bundle of wires. Yeah, there we go. We just have to kind of avoid those. And then right through here. So I don't think we have to worry too much about how we route this. Like I said, it's got this rubber uh, sheet over it. Uh, it's insulated. It's not gonna wear anything and there's no moving parts. So um, I'm gonna wrap this back up and we'll put it back in there and we can test and see if things are cooler. They're de they should definitely be quieter. All right, because I have quite a difficulty with leaving things uh, well enough alone, I ended up routing the wires a little neater down into um, where it's supposed to be. So, um, like I said, uh, <laughs> sometimes I don't know what it is, but some things are like, you have to do me better. And I, um, I do it better. All right, well, that took some <laughs> effort to get the cables all back how I like them. Um, let, let's plug it in and see if any smoke comes out. Power. Can feel air coming out. Everything seems to be working all right. What did we hit last time? Seven, 77, I think. So let's run it um, three times and uh, we'll see where we're at. So we're getting towards the end and it looks like we hit the same temperature, but however, we just hit 77 degrees. Um, we were at near 77 degrees with the old fans, 
at the beginning of the third run and it took all the way to the end of the third run to hit 77. Okay, just like we did with the old fans, we're gonna run this one for 10 minutes and we'll keep an eye on our GPU scores, so, or GPU temperatures. So I'll see you in 10 minutes. Okay, it's been um, just a little bit over 10 minutes and <laughs> that's disappointing, 87 degrees on the GPU. We are running at the clock speed, 1590. That had the exact opposite um, effect that I wanted. Let's see what the BIOS is telling this fan to spin at. It might be spinning too slow. It could be set to silent. Let's find out. Well, there might be the problem. The thermal settings have the fan idle mode all the way down. Let us go ahead and go midway, I guess. What do we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll do halfway-ish. See what happens. So we're into um, Windows. And in the middle, the fans are definitely audible. I can feel air being sucked in. There's wind. But I think that's too loud. I'm going to go turn it down a click or two. Okay, again, we are in Windows, and I turned it down to the second setting, you know, down from 3 to 2, and the decibel rating went way down. I'd say it's much similar to what it used to be with the stock fans. So let's um, let's get back into Heaven Benchmark. Oh. Okay, we just finished again, and we ended up on the same thing, even with a faster spinning fan. Hmm. Okay, it hasn't been exactly 10 minutes yet, but we're already up to 86 degrees on the GPU. Um, which is kind of a bummer, because I thought these fans were going to be nicer. <laughs> I thought they would move more air. I mean, on paper they should have. Um, really, I guess then the only way to make this thing any cooler is to exhaust the air out the back somehow. Or up through here, or out the side, or something. Hmm. Hmm. Currently monkeying around with this thing. I got the cooler off of it. Um, these... Mounting brackets are, you know, a standard size for Intel. So, looking at how far this air has to travel and then go through the fins, it's surprising to me that uh, this thing can cool itself really much at all. Um, I think if this was closer, it would have been a better um, sort of setup. But, really, it's it's probably fine for most um, office PCs and office environments and stuff like that. But we've kind of supercharge this thing up so we need better heat dissipation so what i am doing currently is i'm taking these little uh screws off of you know the, the factory cooler and this thing is so it's there's no weight to it at all it can't like it's got two um it's got two heat pipes but yeah i don't think it's doing a whole lot of good um because there's just no mass to this thing look how small that that um hot plate is, or is that a cold plate, or whatever. Anyways, right there where it mounts to the, um, to the CPU's uh, IHS, it's it's so light. It's There's nothing there. So I've got this really beef uh, Intel stock cooler. And yeah, these aren't amazing, but it's got, you know, a lot of weight to it, and it can soak up a lot of heat. And hopefully this is going to help out. Um, Currently putting, uh, you know, the fasteners from this onto here. Just if we look at the side of these, woohoo, don't fall. The side profile of these, you can see they have sort of the same step up, so this should mount just about the same. It's tough to sort of eyeball it. Um, I do worry about this sticking down too far, but I guess that's what the springs are for. That'll take up that slack. And um, yeah, hopefully it'll be a better setup. Um, one thing though I have noticed right off the bat is I'm gonna have to notch the shroud on the graphics card, which isn't a big deal. I'll take this off and, and cut it up and clean it up. And it's not gonna you know harm it in any way. It's not gonna reduce its ability to cool off. So. Um, uh, my thinking is 
if this is blowing cool air into the system and this is grabbing some and throwing it down, you know, onto the um, CPU to cool that off, there's going to be a lot more cool air that comes in and is available for our, for our video card here. So this is uh, either going to work great or be terrible. <laughs> One of the two, we'll find out. So getting these off is not an easy thing to do. It's actually kind of difficult. Um, so what I did is I take my screwdriver and you reach it up underneath. Um, I don't know what this is going to be called. The retainer clip, the E-clip. Uh, and come up to here. You know, this is underneath the clip and I can't do this one-handed. And then you pry it upwards and it'll bend. And then you can um, just work your way around it and it pops out. you got to hold it with your other hand up like that to give you some, some room to put your screwdriver under it. But it, it pops out. But make sure you're doing it slowly and carefully because this little clip will shoot off into the sixth dimension and nobody will ever see it again. Or it'll shoot off back there and you'll look for 20 minutes and find it. Um, one of the two options. So... After you get this out, you have to put them into here. And the factory um, uh, retainers, the, the white, or clear rather, and the black uh, plastic retainers are simple enough to remove. Uh, but this hole here is a, just a fraction of a millimeter too small for these, th this hardware to fit through. So you just kind of take a screwdriver, you just take a, a drill bit that is just barely big enough to fit in there, or barely small enough to fit in there, and then you just go in there and move it back and forth as it's spinning and it opens it up just enough. It, it shaves off very little material. And then um, installation of this in here is just the reverse of how you get it out of this. So let me get this last one in there and I'll throw this into the computer and um, I'll probably boot it up without the graphics card. We'll just run off the onboard video for a minute and see if this isn't an improvement over um, the factory cooler. I'm hoping it is. Okay. Gonna add, and I'm not cleaning this up because it's not that important. Add a little dollop on there. Um, the reason I'm not cleaning this up because this is the same stuff I've been been putting on there. And, and nothing. So I measured the distance between these two, and you know, of course, these two, and it's 74 and a half. Well, the the original is 74 and a half, and um, the other one is like 74 and a quarter. Um, I'm, I'm thinking it's a, it's, it'll fit. It, it might give us a little resistance, but I think it'll fit. Okay, it is like literally a half a millimeter away from fitting. That really sucks. That means I gotta open, I gotta take these out and move them out like a half a millimeter. Oh, see you in like an hour. Okay, so I've hogged this hole out here to roughly 3.65 and what they are factory is more 4.34 so I don't know if I need to go more I don't know if that's too much um, we're gonna find out I'll make sure though however I get them all to roughly three and a half. Six, six ish. All right. Man. Oh, Taco Bell. It's amazing. Takes your breath away. All right, I got them all back on there. Uh, we did have a casualty. Where'd it go? Right this one here. You can see it's broken. 
but it should still hold on there. No big deal. Should be big enough now. It was just barely too small before. Must have given it enough room now. God, I hope so. I don't want to take this back <laughs> apart. Yes, feels like it's working. That is good. all right so we're gonna have to swap this out um our front case fan i want to leave this in um i want to you know a fresh uh, supply of air coming in here of course and we're gonna move this to hopefully yep it should be able to reach all the way over here so back here there's another fan header this is not so on these 8300 elites or 8000 series elites there's a brown head fan, uh, fan header back here this looks like a fan header but if you plug something into this i'm told bad things will happen it's labeled h sense i don't know what that is um but yeah you you should not be plugging your fan into this evidently okay uh clock the the fan you know spun at 180 so the uh, wires come up through here and run kind of nice and clean down to the fan header there. Um, like I said, don't use that one. There's one over here. It's kind of out of the way. And um, we've got this installed nice and securely. <clears throat> and uh, we'll be feeding it fresh air from here. And hopefully the video card uh, will get more fresh air. Um, like I said, though, it's going to be a tight fit. I'm going to have to cut a little bit of this uh, fan shroud on it away. But, like I said, I'm going to boot it up and run off of onboard video for a minute. And we'll see if this is an improvement over this kind of useless thing. Up and running, everything seems to be working correctly. We're idling. Well, it jumps around, but um, about... 30 to 40 degrees so let's put it through its paces and see if we stay under 77. wrapping up and it's kind of looking promising we shaved about well let's let it finish first we shaved well three degrees off of our highest temperature um was it worth the squeeze mm, maybe I guess we're going to have to see what it's like um, with the graphics card in there. Here's something I didn't anticipate. CPU fan, running beautifully. It kept it 3 degrees cooler. But I think it would have done better if that one was running. Why isn't this fan running? We're plugged in. Maybe you have to turn it on in the BIOS? Let's go check. Well, that's kind of weird. I plug this in and we watch over here oh this is awkward and it stops but this works perfectly fine in the CPU fan hmm so evidently the CPU fan header um, 0.08 amps is enough to keep it happy and supplying power, but back here you need 0.4 amps, or probably somewhere along the lines of that, to oh, to keep the header supplying power to the fan. Um, 
The obvious simple solution here is to put this in here, but I'd rather use that. It's a nice fan. It'll move more air with less current and RPMs, less noise. Oh, jeez. I wonder what happens if I put the CPU fan to here. All right. CPU fan hooked up to the chassis header and the chassis fan is hooked up to the CPU fan. They're both running. Um, this doesn't seem ideal though. <laughs> well, actually, I guess the obvious uh, answer is to use a fan splitter there and have the CPU fan header control both of these fans. Hmm. But when this fan ramps up, this fan will ramp up and, you know, more noise. <sighs> Why? Okay, well, as much as I want to use my pretty new Noctua in there, um, you got to use what works, you know? I mean, it's kind of, kind of forced my hand. So next, uh, I'm going to run my test again and see if, um, I believe we got up to a max of 73 with just this running. Um, now that it has this fan, it, it should be better. It should be better. All right, well, this has been kind of a massive failure. And, well, I mean, it happens. You can't, you can't win them all. Um, like I was saying earlier, though, uh, the temperatures that we were hitting on the CPU and the GPU, these are not awful temperatures. It's not harming it in any way. It is just slowing it down slightly. So really what I'm going to do, and because I'm not going to be doing a lot of gaming on this, like the gaming I, I do on my um, HTPC is stuff like um, Stray and Indie Titles. Uh, I'll Steam or I'll stream Steam games to my TV and, you know, play over the, the Wi-Fi. So... This is not a huge deal. It was just kind of like an exercise to see if I could get it to be better. But, you know, what What can you do? It doesn't always work out for you. So, I am going to take this apart. Put my Noctua fan back in here just so it's going to be nice and quiet. And um, put the factory cooler on here. And put the GPU back in. And with the factory cooler, I won't have to worry about notching the fan shroud. So, um, like I said, I mean... What are you going to do, man? <laughs> Sometimes that happens. What are you going to do? Life's tough, you know? All right, let's let's uh, let's convert this back. Okay, well, it's all back together, and that's going to be about it for this uh, little workhorse here. Um, it's changed hands, I would guess, a number of times throughout the years, and it finally ended up with me. And we've upgraded it quite a bit, which um, is really going to help it be a better HTPC. Um, is it overkill? Yeah, probably, but you know, why not? <laughs> it's fun to do. And um, as for today's little battle, um, we didn't end up winning. Uh, <laughs> it it kind of beat us on that, but like I said, the temperatures are well within um, sort of tolerances, and it's never really going to be pushed as hard as it was um, during those tests in my entertainment center. Like I said, I'm going to use it for ROMs, videos, movies, YouTube, Discord. Um, you know, stuff like that. So it's going to be a fantastic little machine and it's going to fit in my entertainment center a lot better than that bulky uh, ITX. Um, I don't remember what the name brand of that case was. Anyways, it's going to be better than the 3570K that I had in there. So I'm excited. I know you guys like it. Um, I figured I'd give a, a, a closure video, even though this one ended up being like really long. I'll have to see how I edit it down. But um yeah, I really enjoyed this. It was a good investment. Um, what was it? There was a sticker over here. It was like nine, 19 bucks or something like that. It's been uh, it's been great. So um, I enjoyed making it. And if you enjoyed watching it, please give me a thumbs up and maybe a subscription if you like the channel. And I'll see you next time I do something, um, which is about, well, <laughs> lately it's been about every other week. But um, it's kind of slim pickings at the thrift stores lately. And Facebook Marketplace hasn't Hasn't been much better, so um, so I'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much for watching.